yeah today we are going to start with the topic that is the water pollution right but before we start with water pollution you should be familiar with the term that what is actually the pollution is right so we are just starting with the basic that is what is the pollution see pollution is actually contamination of any substance with the undesirable and harmful substance suppose we have air right so if in air there are certain substances present which are harmful and they are undesired that means they are not serving a constructive any the constructive use for the air so that means they are just regarded as the pollutants and they are just polluting the air so likewise uh, these undesirable and harmful substances can be present in air it can be present in water it can be present in so soil so that means means the or in general what we can say that pollution is the contamination of the substance with undesirable and harmful substances and those undesirable and harmful substances are just called as pollutants right now the question comes like what is the basic nature of the pollutants so you should know that these pollutants can be physical in nature they can be uh, chemical in nature and even they can be biological means the factors which uh, leads to the uh, pollution or you can say the substances they can be a physical thing they can be a chemical substance like so2 gas co2 gas or uh, you can say some uh, uh, this thing the metal heavy metals and all so they means they can be chemical in nature and moreover the presence of microorganism just suggest that it can be even it can be biological in nature right now the question is that as we know that what is the pollution and what is the pollutants and what different types of pollutants we get we come across and uh, you know what are the sources from which actually these pollutants come so these sources are actually the natural sources also because there are certain natural activities which are uh, happening around which leads to the means uh, you can say the release of uh, that particular kind of undesirable substance in air right and it can be a man made cause also like due to some human activities also it can be present in a substance that means it is contaminating the given substance so that means their source can be natural and even their source can be uh, the man made activities activities also so now we are just going to discuss about the water pollution that means you are familiar with the pollution you are familiar with the pollutants that the type of the pollutants and even you are familiar that what are the sources right i'll just sum up here so the sources can be man made and the sources can be natural right now the same is applicable for the uh, air pollution is same is applicable for the water pollution and same is applicable for the soil pollution but what they differ in they differ in the type of pollutants or you can say they differ in the substances those harmful and undesirable substances which are present in that given substance whether it is air whether it is water or whether it is soil so at this moment we are just going to start with the water pollution just to look for it uh, that uh, what kind of substances are just polluting water and what adverse effect uh, uh, do they have and Uh, whether we are affected or not by that presence right so if somebody ask you what is water pollution if somebody ask you what is air pollution so definition is uh, definitely going to be same you just have to change the the this thing the name of the substance like if i ask you in general what is pollution so you are going to say that the contamination of the substance with the the undesirable and harmful substances right but if i ask you that what is water pollution then what you are going to answer you are an you are going to answer in a way that the contamination of water with harmful and undesirable substance so that is something water pollution right so that means obviously there are undesirable and harmful substances which are present in water that is just contaminating the water now what are those uh, this thing the substances th those pollutants which are actually affecting the water right so they are so the pollutants that pollute the water are actually the detergents uh the agriculture waste the industrial waste the sewage the microorganisms right and also it can be oil drilling 
so all these are the see apart from that we have many other causes also which are just polluting water but actually the main causes of the water pollution are these six factors right so what is it we are just going to discuss one by one like uh, knowingly or unknowingly how they are just disturbing the uh, water or how they are polluting the water or you can say how they are disturbing the aquatic life which is present in water or what effect adverse effect do they have on us or on the soil as well right so first factor is the detergent so the question comes where these detergents are used as you all are familiar what actually the detergents are detergents are the chemicals which are used in the houses or the anywhere and their use is that that they are solving the purpose for cleaning and they are just uh, or, you, or you can say they ha they have a laundry uh, use and also they are used in dish washing right so that means detergents we need <coughs> obviously we are in immediate need of detergents because we need to uh, clean the utensils as well we need to clean the clothes so detergents are have a you can say a uh, broad use because it is used as a this thing a disinfectant also and so to how they are just polluting the water our concern is that right so what you know what actually detergents contain these detergents contain sodium hypochlorite most of the detergents they contain sodium hypochlorite i'll just write the name also so most of the detergents contain this NaClO that is sodium hypochlorite and along with that what they have they have phosphates in them and along with that they have the surfactants also in them. So you know that uh, these three things that is the sodium hypochlorite the phosphates and the surfactants they are actually uh, the uh, this thing the needed substance for the detergent to solve its uh, like use that means like the detergent is detergent is being used for laundry so if these substances won't be present in the detergent so it won't be able to just fulfill its purpose right so now just look at the uses like what actually they are they are doing for the detergents or what actual they are just uh, they are just helping detergent to solve its uh, purpose right so the first is side uh, this thing the sodium hypochlorite so this sodium hypochlorite is an effective disinfectant so it has to be present in detergent so that the detergent can be used in laundry or for any cleaning purpose right so that means this serve as an uh, you can say an important constituent of the detergent so it has to be present in the detergent we cannot uh, you can say we cannot substitute it with some other chemical second is phosphate Phosphate also plays an important role, right? So how it plays an important role in detergent? It just helps in softening the water, right? So it is just uh, what what function it is fulfilling in detergent? It is softening the water, and moreover, it just helps in removing the stains of grease and oils, and moreover, it just reduces the alkalinity also. So that means it is also an important constituent. It cannot be substituted by any chemical, right? So it has to be present in the detergents. Next, we have is surfactants. So, moreover, you know that what are the surfactants, and we we thoroughly need them, right? So that means these presence of these three substances has to be uh, there in the detergents because they are serving some important uses uh, that the so that the detergent can be used in laundry or uh, this thing, the dishwashing, right? But how it is actually the polluting? How it is just polluting the water? You know that uh, out of them, this uh, this sodium uh, hypochlorite is also you can say a chemical substance. So when it just get disposed into water, it just affect the water. You know how it affect the water? I'll just discuss when I'll just club surfactants and all, right? So at this moment, you should know that this is a chemical, and if disposed in water, it can cause the pollution. We'll discuss the factor that how it can cause pollution. Second, we have phosphate. So all of the three, the, the surfactants, the phosphates, and the sodium hypoch hypochlorite. So when the detergents gets disposed in the water bodies, what they do? They actually lead to the excess growth of algae. They actually lead to the growth of algae in uh, the water body. So this uh, the growth of algae is so numerous, or you can say algae spread in water in one go, and the uh, this thing the amount is too high, and you know the excess growth of algae is something called as the phenomena that is the water bloom. So I can say that when these chemicals are just disposed into water, they lead to the excess growth of algae, or you can say they lead to water bloom. Now the question must be arising in your mind that how water bloom is uh, this thing, the polluting the water bodies, or how the presence of algae is just affecting the water. 
so you know that do you know that this water bloom what does it do uh, like how it affects the water this excess growth of algae takes all the oxygen which is present in the water bodies and when it will it just extract the amount of the ex excess of oxygen from the water bodies how the aquatic life is going to respire in that case so that means this water bloom will just affect the aquatic life because they will deoxygenate the water that means the water uh, the oxygen level in the water will just fall and uh, the aquatic life won't get uh, the oxygen for the respiration so what will happen to the aquatic life obviously they will die so that means this water bloom actually leads to the uh, this thing eutrophication this whole phenomena is called as eutrophication and this is something very important and you uh, get in exam and uh, like it is a very important term which you often come across as a question in paper that what is eutrophication or how it is caused right so what is the you can say a technical term which is used for in eutrophication so if somebody asks you about eutrophication so just say that excess disposal of chemical into water bodies leads to the excess growth of algae that is called as water bloom and what does this water bloom do this water bloom just uh, what they what it it de oxygenate the water that means it extract the excess amount of oxygen from the water bodies leaving behind uh, less oxygen which is uh, you can say the amount is so minimum that it is not fulfilling the demand of uh, aquatic life so they don't get oxygen for the respiration and when they will not get the oxygen for the respiration then how they will survive obviously they are going to die so eutrophication is something a phenomena that uh, that uh, that happens when the chemicals just get disposed into water bodies is leading to water bloom leading to deoxygenating water and just affecting the aquatic life so this is actually uh, the, the, the how the detergents are just uh, you can say they are uh, uh, this thing affecting the water right because they are affecting the water life aquatic life so obviously they are just uh, you can say they are just polluting the water so i think it's clear that how the detergents are just affecting the uh, uh, or how they are acting as a water pollutant second we have is an agriculture waste right so you know that uh, for better crop production we need to use certain chemicals we use pesticides pesticides are certain chemicals which uh, just destroy the pest right because pests are the organisms which just uh, destroy the crops so we don't want our crops to be destroyed obviously we need the production should be high so what we do we just sp uh, spray them with the uh, chemicals that is the pesticides that means the chemical which will just stop the growth of the pest right and obviously they are needed for the better uh, this thing the crop production or for a sustainable agriculture we need that so what happens so we need the pesticides obviously that is clear that we don't want the pest to attack crops so we need the pesticides there are not only the pesticides there are many chemicals which we are using right see we need to increase the fertility of the soil because it is directly or indirectly in just involving in the increase in the crop production so we need the for uh, this thing the fertilizers also right and you know that the fertilizers are also the chemicals they are increasing the uh, fertility of the soil but they are also uh, chemical in nature if uh, get disposed to the uh, this thing the water body they will also leads to an eutrophication that means the a stage can come like if we just if we have an excess use of this thing, fertilizers or the chemicals whether in the agriculture or the detergents so they will just affect the aquatic life and if the aquatic life will extinct so that means a food chain is just going to uh, this thing uh, there will be a blockage in the food stain food chain and it will just affect the ecosystem so that means the agriculture branch branch or you can say the agriculture waste is also polluting this uh, the water water bodies third we have the industrial waste now see uh, uh, with the increase of modernization obviously we need industries right because industries are just solving many uses for us like they are there are industries which are uh, this thing synthesizing certain chemicals like detergents they are synthesizing the perfumes dyes so we need all all those products we are in an immediate need of those products because in market or in a daily life they are just solving some purpose for us right so with increase in modernization the industrialization is also increasing and when the industrialization 
globalization is increasing it is just benefiting us but it has a you can say adverse effect on our uh, this thing the our punch that that is the air water soil the water and this kinds of things right so that means they have to be uh, means we have to minimize uh, we have to do certain kind of things so that they should not pollute the, the uh, our uh, you can say the environment ecosystem or they should not affect the ecosystem now how the our concern at this moment is that that how industrial waste is just polluting the water bodies so as i've told you there are so many industries the mines the dyes industry the paints industry the pesticides industries so that means they are also just uh, releasing certain kind of substances which are uh, this thing destroying the water uh, nature so what are those substances they can be organic inorganic they can be acid and alkalis uh, they can be some other chemical compounds so in any way they are just destroying the water for example we have some heavy metals right like the like the lead and the mercury and you know that if these heavy metal get disposed into water they are just affecting the water now how for example the example which is striking in my mind you know you are aware of the lead metal right you know that uh, like if uh, if the lead is uh, this thing disposed to the water body and uh, through water if we take if we take the untreated water that means if lead comes into the food chain what how it is just going to uh, like what adverse effect it is going to have on our body it will just reduce the activity of the enzymes and you know enzymes are the chemicals which are actually needed in the body because they are performing many biochemical reactions so the, if lead uh, knowingly or unknowingly get into the food chain or into an any organism it is just going to uh, you can say retard the degrade the activity of the enzymes so that means it is uh, just uh, you can say an an adverse effect on that organism which uh, taken that lead as likewise we have mercury also you know mercury can cause mercury poisoning how the mercury when exposed to the water this thing disposed to the water gets converted to the methyl mercury i repeat when mercury is uh, disposed into the water it has a tendency that it gets converted into methyl mercury and uh, it gets inoculated and fish is obviously there in the water so that means uh, directly or indirectly this methyl mercury is present in that fish also and we all are fond of uh, taking fish so when we take the fish so that means that uh, methyl mercury enters in our body and it causes the disease that that is the mercury poisoning so obviously that means it is a, it, it is uh, having an adverse effect on our body or any other member uh, of the food chain so obviously it is affecting the ecosystem right so likewise we have many nitrates phosphates also they are also just uh, harmful for us like the nitrates phosphate uh, the inorganic substances or the organic which we get from the industrial waste so they also leads to the eutrophication which we discussed that is water bloom that is the deoxygenation of water so that means that is also serving as an uh, you can say and they, it also has an adverse effect moreover there are certain you can say the the industrial waste also contains the oils or the alkalis so they also affect the water because they don't let oxygen to enter in they just form the film on the surface so that means that they, that is also affecting the aquatic, aquatic life and if the aquatic life is will suffer obviously the water vol pollution will take place and if the water bodies will get polluted because it is one of the our uh, this thing the elementary factor of the biosphere that is they are one of the member of the punch that so that means we are our ecosystem will just uh, get uh, disturbed so that means the, the, this industrial waste also has an it, it act as a pollutant or it has adverse effect on the water bodies the next factor is we have is the sewage now what is the sewage or uh, you know that the sewage uh, is be of a, mo mostly it is a domestic sewage now the question must be arising in your mind what is domestic sewage so domestic sewage is actually the untreated uh, waste water which just just get disposed into the water bodies so that means the sewage is also creating many uh, you, you can say many problems for us like it is just spreading the disease because when the sewage is just disposed into the water untreated sewage is disposed into water it leads to the, uh, the growth of the microorganisms that cause diseases as you know typhoid malaria they all occur to the uh, due to presence of the microorganisms and there are many other diseases as well that are caused by the microorganisms right likewise the sewage uh, may contain the, the it, it maximum it contain the organic and the inorganic substances like the things which we are using at home like in kitchen you are using the foods you are using the vegetables you are using the fruits so they all they are all act as a organic 
toxic substances and if they are present in sewage they are just going to affect the water bodies likewise we have soaps and detergents also like we are doing laundry and we just uh, this thing uh, pass the untreated water into the water body so that means directly or indirectly we are just disturbing our ecosystem right and nobody wants to do that because we are directly or indirectly just get we get affected by it because we need water you know that the water is the water is really needed for the survival right we cannot uh, live without water so that means this sewage is also creating a problem and you know the, it just uh, increases the BOD also. Now what is BOD? BOD is actually biological oxygen demand. So what happens when this untreated waste water just gets disposed into the water bodies so it just increase the BOD. How it is increasing that? It's because the sewage when disposed in water it leads to the production of many microorganisms and those microorganisms are also taking the dissolved oxygen of the water. So that means the biological oxygen demand in the water will just get increased and if it, it will get increased and if it is not meeting that sufficient amount of oxygen so that means obviously it is going to create and water pollution that means it is going to affect the aquatic life and if any one factor of a food chain gets affected so we also get affected so that means it also uh, uh, this thing uh, one of the pollutant that is just polluting the water moreover microorganisms oil drilling uh, that I have already explained you because they are causing the diseases <coughs> they, these oils also be like when the um, oil just gets escapes into uh, this thing disposed into the water they are just forming the film and they do not allow the oxygen to come into the water so that means how aquatic life is going to suffer right so these are actually the factors that are creating the water pollution so <coughs> we should take certain measures in order just to reduce them like uh, we should look for an alternative uh, constituent for the detergent so that it doesn't lead to an eutrophication which i told you is an important impact on the water Likewise, agriculture waste, we can make use of certain substances like uh, the <coughs> manures or any other substances which are biodegradable <coughs> that do not cause pollution. So that means we can take into account uh, or we can just uh, make uh, use of those substances other than using the chemicals like fertilizers, pesticides. We can look for some alternative source. Obviously, the, the science is just, uh, you can say, um, the scientists are all working in the different fields they are just looking for the alternatives because we need the substance we uh, which uh, fulfill all the all our purposes and it should not uh, and should be eco friendly as well right so the scientists are all working in the field so we can just upgrade our education and should uh, we can just take some measures or we can just invent something we can do we have this kind of zeal in, our, in uh, us that we can do something like that so that we can just uh, this thing remove an impact of this agriculture waste or the chemicals on the water bodies and can save aquatic life likewise industrial waste or sea waste we can treat water before disposing it right so that means we can do a certain measures and even the the government should make certain organizations who can work on this part who can just educate people are, are about this water pollution or the importance of the water so that we can just uh, you can say reduce the effect of these harmful substances on the water and